is a research institute where we do testing of hydrodynamics. So we are testing ships and offshore structures and we look whether they are efficient and uh, safe. So we are testing them in the basins we have so you can imagine them as uh, large swimming pools where we can generate wind waves and current and to see whether they are working well and whether they are safe in the most harsh environment they will encounter. We're looking at uh, trying to develop some very good uh, test data uh, for floating wind turbine structures. It's a very novel structure with a lot of unique dynamics and physics. Um, we're trying to get some data so that we can use those to construct, improve, and create numerical simulators that we'll use in the optimization and design process uh, for, these, for these structures in the future. We're already seeing that we've gotten data that uh, where interesting things are happening that we didn't expect, that maybe the models can't predict. And that's very useful for us in improving the models and pushing them to the limits because we really want to be able to uh, predict failure. Uh, if, we can't, if we miss those physics and we go to design a structure uh, and, and we miss something important, that structure could fail or be unoptimized. And you know, this is uh, money's everything with, with energy production, so uh, good tools are a necessity. If you have a design, you need to have you need to understand. Okay, how is it going to perform? Is it going to give you the enough power to give to, to drive down that cost? But then you also have to have cost models. You have to have a model of if you design this system, how much is it going to cost? So there's two two aspects of it that's driving you know what system is going to be optimal. It's trying to understand the cost side of it, but also what the performance is of a given design. And by having tools to give you that information, um, that will give you the knowledge of what designs are going to be really feasible and which are not. Well, it's very complicated. I mean, there's NREL has traditionally been in the field of wind industry, and um, there's obviously the oil and gases who are looking to, to understand the offshore structures. But coupling together a system that has to be excited by both the wind and the waves and has to be stable, but has to also be able to produce power is, yeah, very complicated. And in the side of dynamics, which I'm in, you have a coupling of all these different forces. You have the wind coupling to the waves, coupling to the elasticity of the system, and then there's also um, a control aspect to the, the, the system. Control goes into how everything is being coupled together as well. The, the good things, uh, we're in the water and uh, things are floating, haven't sunk anything yet. Um, and uh, we've done a lot of testing for the Tension Lake platform uh, mounted uh, floating wind turbine. Uh, seen a, a, a whole plethora of, of unique uh, dynamics, uh, interaction between uh, the flexible tower and the platform and the, and the tendons. Um, uh, seen some unique interaction between the wind and wave loads how they interact with each other as, as they change relative to one another, uh, see how the damping's affected uh, from the wind and the waves, um, like I said, as, as, as we change them. Uh, and and uh, a lot of things that you couldn't just, just assume. There are some unique phenomena where they kind of, you know, the, the coins flipped depending on where you are. One major lesson learned from a wave basin testing was in regard to certain aspects of the wave loading of these structures, uh, specifically uh, something called second order wave forces. And this drastically uh, affected the results uh, of our testing. And we saw, because of this loading, very unique tower dynamics response, mooring responses, and other structural responses that will be key to understanding and designing these structures in the future. So keen observers will note uh, in our wave basin test that uh, the wind turbine blades are spinning pretty fast, uh, maybe it doesn't look quite realistic, and uh, that's due to the scaling laws that are required in order to properly conduct a test in the wave basin. Uh, obviously you want to get the interactions and reactions of the platform right, so uh, you're interested in scaling the wind and wave forces, uh, relating those to the inertias properly, so you need to, need to do a few things um, 
in, in the wave basin, some of which are obvious. You make uh, your models smaller, you make them way less, uh, but also to maintain all those relationships in, in the wind and wave loads and inertias, you also have to speed up time by a, a fair amount. I think that the major challenge is making it uh, so efficient and so reliable that in the end we can do it for a low cost uh, price. And then I think there are huge uh, opportunities because the, the sea is open, uh, you can do it in, in large areas and it can also drive a lot of new developments. Of course this is, these are the first designs. As soon as people realize how important it is, we can optimize it further and further.